Welcome to Models, Games, Dioramas, and Things. What can you imagine today? Models, Games, Dioramas, and Things is a place where we show techniques and alternatives that are utilized for detailing models, dioramas, vignettes, game terrain, and more. We share practical and alternative solutions for makers and artists. Come join us in the journey. What can you imagine today? If you're new to this channel, welcome. We hope you enjoy what you see and get a little information to help you on your journey. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you. There are no promotions, sponsorships, or compensation associated with any product, brand, or seller that I may display, demonstrate, or mention in this video. With that out of the way, let's get to it. The diorama I'm making here might be of interest to just about anyone. It will be a diorama of the famed geyser Old Faithful, located in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, United States. I will concentrate on the land features surrounding about two to 3,000 feet or about 750 meters from the geyser Old Faithful. It will not depict man-made forms such as trails, platforms, or buildings. I have been modeling for more than 30 years. I've acquired a large set of tools to help me. I'm a gadget geek, I guess. Some of these tools may not be required at first, but can be obtained over time to minimize your costs for getting started. The tools and materials I used for this phase of the project are a sketchbook and drawing pencils. Most craft and art supply stores have a wide selection of these. I used a rudimentary sketch to help me understand the angle of view. This is a very rough sketch because I do not have the physical dexterity to make or draw beautiful renderings that some people like say Adam Savage does. But the idea is the same in any case. For my models and dioramas, I sketch out an idea of how I want the final product to look. These sketches may take on many angles and perspectives until I am satisfied with what the diorama may look like. For this diorama, the best viewing angle and scale had changed. First, I scaled it too big. I had scaled it at 187th scale or HO gauge. For the diorama to be made at that scale, it would fill up my entire living room. The scale was ultimately odd. It was about 1 to 500 scale. This scaled out nicely to about 9 by 12 inches, a very manageable model size. Then the diorama went from the viewing angle of how one might see it if they went to see Old Faithful, from looking generally to the north to looking generally to the south. Then again, for this diorama, I have used information and images from Google Earth Pro, satellite imagery, images and drawings from the National Park Services, archived maps from the National Geological Survey, and images of Old Faithful that many people have already taken and shared on the internet. Because of the vast depth of information on the internet, it was not necessary to go see Yellowstone Park for myself. The next item that I began to use was dense foam or extruded polystyrene. This is the type of insulation foam that can be found at any big box builder supply stores like say Menards, Home Depot, or Lowe's. It comes in pink, blue, green, and possibly other colors. The foam is essentially the same. The colors are different because of the manufacturer. The other type of foam that can be used is quite messy to use. This is expanded polystyrene. When you cut it, it breaks off into beads and makes a mess. You can use a hot wire foam cutter to minimize the mess. 
However, the finished product may not be as robust. In any case, each of these foams may be cut with a hot wire cutter. For this diorama, I have used a one inch thick panel of extruded polystyrene. To cut this extruded polystyrene dense foam to size, I used a razor knife. Any long sharp knife can be used to cut the foam board to size. I used a sharpie marker, a straight edge, and a square to ensure the size and shape were sufficient for this diorama. The next product that I use is foam board. This is also called foam core. It is essentially polystyrene sandwiched with paper. This paper can be removed for model making. For this diorama, I used it to layer up for hill and valley elevations. Alternatively, one could use cardboard, chipboard, mat board, or even thin cork sheets to make changes in elevations for hills and valleys. I used topographical maps to determine the changes in elevation and cut out sections from foam board to represent certain elevations. I cut the shapes of the elevation from copies of a topographical map. I used these as a stencil or template to transfer those shapes to the foam board. This required several copies of the map. Foam board can be cut very easily with any hobby knife. In this case, I used a scalpel. I layered the foam board pieces until each elevation was fully represented. Each layer was glued with a polyurethane adhesive. Gorilla Glue Clear formulation is the one used here. I misted the surface of adjacent pieces with distilled water and spread adhesive on the other piece. Ordinary tap water would work. The differences between stilled and tap water are for project longevity. Tap water may contain contaminants that may tend to reduce the life of the product. At least that's my hypothesis. I spread the adhesive with a brush that is commonly called an acid brush. It's just one of those cheap brushes that I bought from Harbor Freight. Any old paintbrush would suffice. It's a good idea to wear gloves. I used weights and pens to hold things in place while the adhesive dried. It dries in about two hours with a five minute working time and comes to a full cure in about 24 hours. I used plywood luon about a quarter of an inch and using the same Gorilla Glue, I attached a piece of plywood cut to size. I used a ruler square to measure the size and used a saw, in this case a circular saw, to cut the plywood. The plywood will add strength to the diorama as well as allow the diorama to have a finished look once the borders are attached in later steps. It can be stained along with the sized for a fine look. I also used PVA adhesive as a base coat. PVA adhesive is often called or sold under the brand name Elmer School Glue, Tide Bond, and other labels. It is used to coat the foam of the diorama after all the elevations of the Gorilla Glue have dried. I used what is commonly called a chip brush. These can be purchased from any paint or big box store. I went cheap and bought them at Harbor Freight. They don't have to last long. You typically throw them away after you use them anyway. And finally, we're coming to the close nearly. Uh, a base coat formulation that I've prepared. Uh, Mod Podge is great to be used as a base coat. It's flat and dries clear. However, if you use a lot of it, Mod Podge can be quite pricey. And the alternative, I've made a similar product. Contrary to popular belief, Mod Podge is not just PVA. My formulation is made with water-based polyurethane finish, PVA adhesive, and a small amount of flow aid used for acrylic paint. In this step, I used it in its clear state, and in the next step, I used the same formulation with acrylic inks added 
for color. With the colored base coat, I used it with fabric interfacing. My use of fabric interfacing comes with a bit of history. Many model users use Woodland Scenics product called plaster cloth. Others use paper towels with plaster to do the same thing. A long time ago, I got sucked down a black hole of YouTube. Some of you may get that. And I stumbled on a video where a drywall contractor was talking about different kinds of drywall tape. He also builds models. He was looking at a particular type of drywall tape that looks like dryer sheets. It was a non-woven fabric. Fibafuse is a similar brand name for this type of product. I don't use dryer sheets. The product in question for drywall joints is expensive, albeit possibly a very good product. I have no experience with it. But looking at the texture of dryer sheets, I went to the fabric store. The closest thing that I can find looked just like the dryer sheets. It was called fabric interface. People who sew use this to stiffen collars or the cuffs of dress shirts, that type of thing. I use the product along with the colored base coat, much like those who build things from fiberglass, layering on resin and fiberglass sheet. In like manner, I layered colored base coat with fabric interface sheets along with more colored base coat. This adds a considerable amount of strength to the already strong foam. What it allows is for the surface to not become dented and chipped. I use it in a colored form for the unlikely event that somehow the surface would chip. It wouldn't just show through a stark white plaster through any colors that may be there, but would look brown like earth or any other color that I might choose to make it. I typically make the base coat in brown and or black. From here, we'll move the project forward to the completion of the substrate of the diorama. You'll see this in my next installment in two weeks. Please like this video, comment, I would love to hear from you, and subscribe. All these actions will truly help me help you. Thank you.